When it comes to EVE Online, every player wants to know the most effective tactic available. You want to know the meta. The meta controls everything. It determines what will and will not happen. Knowing the meta will alter your views, make you question your reality. It might even make you laugh. And now, you're part of it. You're watching The Meta Show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from around New Eden, welcome to The Meta Show. Today is July 9th, 2022. We are back from a one-week hiatus for July 4th. You people are going absolutely batshit insane in the chat, dropping money, throwing it in our faces. We love it. Level 5 hype train. Before the show starts, we are at almost 600% wow. of a level 5 hype train. That's got to warm the cockles of your heart, doesn't it, Mittens? It does. And please, guys, when you're seeing dudes like Crazy Dissy just absolutely throwing down, make sure to thank the people that are gifting you gift subs. It is awesome. We love to see the support. Uh, Sally Salomon was in there. We got so Poi Butler or Poi Butler. I saw earlier was a dude I haven't seen throw that many subs at a screen before. Uh, it, it's really cool. It's very affirming to, to come back after a break and see you guys going, hey, let's do a pre-show hype train. And we love to be able to do the pre-show hype trains because that way we can call out people that are gifting subs. Uh, uh, without interrupting, uh, you know, in the middle of some sort of screaming smug beater. Because you know that's going to happen, right? Because, I mean, it's oh, inevitable. Wow. We've been gone for two weeks. There's been a whole buttload of news that's happened in the last two weeks that we've got to cover today on the that's show. True. That's true. But I want to start with a bit of a soapbox. All right, let's do All it. All right, we're going to do the bad news first. This is Brit's soapbox for today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what is in the humble opinion of your humble anchor, the biggest issue facing EVE Online right now. If you have your launcher up, look in the bottom right-hand corner and you will see the number of players live on Tranquility right now. I'm gonna go over and look at mine because it's on another screen and it's very small and I will tell you what it is. It is. 23,340 players on a Saturday afternoon. Two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, that was in the 30s. Four or five years ago, six years ago, that was in the 40s. If you look at U.S. time zone on the average weeknight, we are getting sub 14,000 players on at the same time. In fact, we were very close last night, not, I guess not last night, not Friday night, but we're very close Thursday and Tuesday nights of this week of getting 12,000 players online. This is the absolute most critical and important thing facing this game right now. The number of people that are logging in and playing the game are at lows we've not seen in a very, very long time. And when I mean very long time, I'm not talking months. I am talking more than a decade. I am talking 2006 and seven levels of, of numbers. And that's when the game was on an upward trajectory. This is something we got to keep in mind. A lot of you who are watching the show, don't log into the game anymore. You watch the show because you want to see me and Mittens talk. You want to hear what's going on in EVE, but you're not logging in and playing it. And I think we need to keep this in mind. And as we talk about all of the stuff on the show today, the war is going on in NullSec. We've got two of them going on right now. We've got a new CCP update that just came out last week that was pretty well received by all, you know, uh, for all intents and purposes. So we need to, I think, highlight, and we're going to continue and make this a, a point on the show for the foreseeable future to talk about the PCU to talk about the active user numbers and make it clear that we are very concerned that these numbers are low. And yes, it's summer. And yes, people are going outside. And yes, we are touching grass. We did it last Saturday. Mm -hmm. We took mm -hmm. a week off to touch grass. But the reality is EVE Online as a game survives and thrives only when people are playing it. This is a game where the, every player that is online in space is content for another player, potentially. 
whether they are a market to sell to, whether they are someone to shoot at, whether they are a friend to go meet. These are all people in space doing things. That's what we need right now. And it is incumbent upon CCP, no matter what they do, I don't care whether it's a balance change. I don't care whether it's a graphical update. I don't care whether it's new content. I don't care whether it's fixing technical debt from 10 years ago. Every time they spend a penny of resources on anything in EVE Online development, and they should spend more than they are, they need to ask themselves, will this get more players in space? And if they say no, then they really have to sincerely question whether or not that's something that needs to be done right now. That is my soapbox for the week. You know, it's interesting because uh, obviously U.S. time zone in particular has seen a big hit uh, ever since they raised the prices to $20 a month. Uh, we have encouraged CCB to add multi-account discounts and generally speaking to uh, look at what's happening and respond to it accordingly. Uh, there is only a little bit of good news here, and I'm, I'm happy that we have good news here, right? Like, I'm, gl I'm glad that Brisk is starting us out. Hey, we're aware of the PCU thing. We're all watching it like hawks. And some time zones are suffering more than others. Um, but there is actually a little bit of goodness. Like, I, I, I came here today uh, to actually deliver a slight gold. So I, I'd give it a proper gold star. I'm not going to say that it's turning around the game and that it's solving everything, but I'm at least happy to say that the graphical updates that CCP implemented and apparently rave reviews for the, the new improved career agent system with the, the AIR missions or whatever, people liked it. People really seemed to enjoy it. And I was expecting, you know, the, the nightmare for anybody who runs a large organization in EVE Online, you know, you're playing this video game that you love with your friends, uh, is that the company uh, just completely makes a dog's breakfast of the whole thing. And it, so it was really nice to see, okay, we talked about on the show a couple of weeks back how CCP had spent... $8 million on research and development for something. And they had kept talking about how they were going to do revamp new player experience and they were going to do whatever. And at, at least people liked it, right? Like the, the reviews of the things that were implemented were, were positive. It got positive feedback. Uh, that doesn't change the fact that one of the biggest issues in US time zone is that price hike coming at a terrible Absolutely. time. They haven't 100%. been able to, you know, really even fix capital ship production. We still have a bunch of lingering issues that have been afflicting the game for a while. But I, I do want to say that when CCB does something that is positive or when they have an expansion or anything added to the game that people say worked out well, uh, like the AR, AIR system, like I, I'm going to be making a new alt here and I'm going to go through the whole thing between now and next week. Um, maybe not the entirety of all of the missions or whatever, but I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to try the new Photon UI as well. Uh, in Goonswarm, we have just created like an alt alliance for our alt corpse. And uh, as part of that, you know, hey, I'm going to make a make a new space guy and put him in there. And it, it seems like a good opportunity to just start from the beginning and be like, okay, well, let's see what's up with the upgraded photon UI. Let's see what's up with all of these things. Um, and so I am looking forward to that uh, in the midst of all of the interesting space war stuff. But, you know, they, they got to do something about either multi-account discounts or just getting better with delivering the things that the player base have been asking for forever in the game. Uh, it, it's a situation and uh, it breaks my heart seeing the U S time zone numbers as low as they are. Uh, but Hey, that's uh, the, the decisions that CCP made and here we are. So uh, what else do we have besides, besides downer CCP stuff? Like they're, well, they're, they're that's, I mean, that's the down, things. the downer stuff we're done with now because yeah. we've got okay, we two we major, got way. we've got two wars Ooh. going on. One of them is kind of boring. The other one is pretty freaking exciting. And we want to share it with you guys because it's shaping up to be a, little, a real humdinger up, up north. So we're going to go into our top story, which is David versus Goliath. This is the fraternity versus Volta slash Brave War in the north. Now, on July the 1st, which was eight days ago, we got a translated, poorly, unfortunately, post from Fraternity. They had a Chinese alliance update in which they essentially said, and now they never said this outright, so this is the, the headline writer on Reddit taking some liberties, but what they said was the entire North should be united under the banner of Fraternity. 
which it already pretty much is. But this was something that was even brought to even even more brought into stark realization when fraternity under the leadership of Naraus chose to de declare war on we form blob slash Volta, essentially the greater trash coalition GTC. Winterco has controlled most of the North. These guys have been their neighbors for a while. And they decided we can't handle the fact that Volta smacks us around every once in a while. They broke a informal non-invasion pact that apparently was signed, but wasn't signed, but we don't know if it's real or what happened with it. And that was enough for them to want to go and smack Volta around. And they gave Brave an ultimatum. Stay out of the way or you're next. Brave essentially channeling their inner Ukrainian said, fuck you, we're not going anywhere, and chose to fight back. So, according to FRT, and I talked to my dear CSM colleague Luke this morning, who gave me a statement from FRT, essentially saying that this war, according to fraternity, is the culmination of a historic rivalry between the Greater Trash Coalition and Winter Co. Apparently, a small number of groups in we form blob has ramped up their harassment of FRT space and they are responding by going to war. Brave has decided to get in the middle of it. Their current stated objective is to put the screws to Volta and glass what they need to do in that process. They do not intend, according to Luke, to hold any sovereignty. Now, if you go through and you read the, the statements that were made by FRT, they seem a little hyperbolic, in my opinion. One of the things they said, which I was rather surprised to see, was that in it apparently immediately moved 65 dreadnoughts and supplied and several supply manufactured freighters to 6RCQ on the border of Fade. And pure and uh, or pure, I think pure blind and uh, and and whatever space is up there that I can't remember off the top of my head. This is news to me because we never did that. In fact, all we did was move some ships from asset safety back to fountain. And if you want to know how we can prove it, well, here's the battle report from when snuffed out dropped and killed five of our freighters on a gate. Oops. It's a lot of lost isogen. It is what it is. Yeah, and if you're looking at what's in here, isogen. Not fitted ships, not battle material, no dreadnought mm -hmm. parts, nothing. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to FRT's war declaration, they want to go and smack Volta around. That's fine. But let's take a little look here at the map because I'm kind of wondering what the point of this is. Fraternity controls Tenal, Branch, Venal, Tribute, Veil of the Silent, and everything up to the border of Geminate with Horde, who are their besties. Because Pappy's going to Pappy. Mm -hmm. On the other side, you've got Blob, which controls Declan, Brave that controls Pure Blind. You've got unaffiliated guys that own Clown Ring and Bander Logs and Scum Lords in there too. What is the what is the threat to, vo to to FRT here? I don't I don't get it. Mittens, can you fill me in? Because some of this stuff doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Why is Fraternity, the second largest alliance in the game, worried about Volta, which by my count is something like not even close to uh yeah, they're 45th. They have 619 active members as opposed Could to fraternity with 31,000 or 24,000. Renting? Could it be yeah, renting? I forgot it's renting. Could it they be love to renting? Rent. Renting. It renting. It is almost as if. Could it be renting? For weeks now, we have said, look, the pappies are all space slumlord wannabes. And we have said, they will drop whatever they are doing to defend other space slumlord wannabes who are conveniently all in Pappy. Brave is not in Pappy. 
Brave used to be in Pappy, and after the Vietnam War, they decided that they wanted to strike out on their own as a mid-size alliance, which is, as you're going to find as the story progresses, there isn't any Imperium involvement in this thing at all because we have our own war in the East against Pappy. Uh, and, and, you know, one of the things that was so funny to me about this situation was, oh, and it is totally coming. And then you see Vince Draken screaming and bringing NC dot over to blob up with fraternity, because as I have said repeatedly on the show on firesides and speeches at the end of the day, if you look at their actions, the entirety of Pappy is just one big landlord scheme. They want to be the space landlords. And I believe based upon many years of watching EVE Online decline, I believe that renting is one of the reasons why that is, a, is an issue. I believe that renting space is not a thing that should be allowed because it prevents players from enjoying the game. Now, that might be an extreme position, but I'm glad to say that since we have been appropriately calling out some of the pappies on their landlord, slumlord, wannabe nonsense, uh, some of them have started accusing the Imperium and I'm not going to get too into the line by line about this, but it was just really nice to see some of the uh, garbage tier FCs from Horde start to say, oh, well, the init, init is still renting. You say that renting is bad. Init has renters pointing to some randos in cloud ring. No, we don't. And so what I'd like to say about that is not to refute the idea, because obviously it's nonsense, just in the same way that this invisible init dreadnought fleet going up there was nonsense. It's all just slumlord things. But the great news my friends, the great news is, is that even the landlords now agree <laughs> that renting space is bad. Uh, thank you, Zero Muskie, for telling everybody that, yes, it's bad to rent space. I look forward to all of the former Pappy Alliances abandoning their renting program because we can all agree it's bad for the game. It wastes space. It prevents new players. It prevents mid-size alliances from being able to do anything because left to your own devices, the Pappies are compulsive slumlords. Compulsive slumlords. They can't help but run and band together in order to try to maintain their hold on spaces that they can rent out. And what happens when they rent that space out? Fraternity, of course, is infamous for being accused repeatedly of botting. That is a huge issue. If you guys remember from years ago, there was a thing called the pie chart of shame. The pie chart of shame. Many years before the pie chart of shame was released by CCP, uh, our enemies and Pappy what would become Pappy, would say that, oh, goons are, goons are, are botters and all these other sorts of things. It turned out to be projection, ladies and gentlemen. It's always projection. And what did we see in the pie chart of shame? We see that in these rental areas, which they are creating and have maintained for years, uh, just a tremendous amount of botting and other nefarious behavior. So what happens? The landlords come in. They try to take space away from people like Brave and Volta, who could potentially grow into big dogs if they felt like it. But you have Norris and Vince rushing together to defend their little uh, slum business model, I guess. Yep. And then when they drive smaller alliances out, what is that space then filled with? It is filled with bots and RM tiers. It's not good for the game. If they nope. weren't botting and RMTing, it would be one thing, but CCB clearly cannot police all of those things. So I believe that renting should not be allowed in EVE Online. I think it's bad for the game. And I'm glad that Zero Muskie has admitted that renting is bad and publicly called it out. I agree. Renting space is bad. It should not be a part of EVE Online, uh, but God knows the Pappies and all their quizlings are busy working together as hard as they can to maintain their little slumboard empire against Brave, Volta, or anybody else that doesn't want to be a part of Block. We did not help them because they didn't ask us for help, and we are a Block. We're doing our old, own thing. We want independent alliances up there. So we wish them the very best. And we're going to spend the rest of the show kind of going through some of the things that have happened there. It's fascinating. But don't listen to the pappies when they say it's this wall of text of a whole bunch of reasons that Norris has. It's just about clearing land to rent it out and controlling it. What happened next? So I would just like to say for the record, so that oh Karen, I mean oh Muskie understands what in it was doing the guys in cloud ring if you go visit clown ring my i, I which i i call it clown ring because it's very funny to me we hate it up there it's a pain i get smart bombed all the time the seventh sanctum guys among other groups that live there 
are very good at what they do. And the entire reason they are there is because Init invited them to move into this space we didn't want and take it over for themselves. Why? Because it's content. They keep our pilots on our toes. We go out and mess with them. I go say hi to the guys. I think they're all pretty good dudes. We like having them on our border. We don't need to control everything. And we certainly aren't, they certainly aren't paying us any money. If we felt like going and taking clown ring, we could take it. Nobody wants clown ring except them. They're free to have it. But anyway, <laughs> so what happens? Brave is, at, Brave is basically told, you will bend the knee, you will stay the hell out of this, or we're coming for you. Brave gives them the finger, says, no, we're not doing that, and we're going to keep fighting. So what immediately happens this week? Two nights in a row, especially last night, we saw Fraternity try to take a headshot at Brave Staging System and FTACN. And... Do you want to know what happens next? <laughs> yes. What happens do. next? What happens? Just like David and versus Goliath, little David, little brave, walks up, shines up his stone real good, sticks it in the sling, and boom, we get this battle report in which Fraternity, who mustered 874 players throughout the fleet, there you go. To Volta and Braves, about 700 or so, slightly less than 800. Brave, 383 dues in fleet. Fraternity doubled that number. Of course, you got Horde there because Pappy's got a Pappy. Mm -hmm. Over here, you've got Blob and Volta. These are all the GTC guys coming together along with Brave. And what happens? Boom. We've got Supers on Grid. They actually managed to tackle a Brave Super, but couldn't kill it. And Brave walks away, not only with saving their stager, but also blooding the nose of Fraternity, a group that is literally three times their size, and winning the Iskwar. Not that that matters, but it's still pretty good. Now, we have a statement <laughs> from... Our dear friend Dunk Dinkle, I asked him today for a statement on victory in FTEC and what Dunk Ooh. said exclusive to the Meta Show is last night was a classic Eve battle in FTEC and that lived up to the hype. Faced with an ultimatum to walk away, Brave chose to fight. Both sides committed hard with full sends with a wide range of tactics used, including supers on the combat grids. I'm happy that Brave was able to successfully defend our IHUB, but this is just the first major battle in the war. Kudos to all the pilots on both sides that alarm clock to participate and blow up some spaceships and create some glorious salvage. P.S. Brave is recruiting. This is a standard Dunk Dinkle kind of statement. It is magnanimous. It is nice. It talks about salvage. That's what I would, I would expect <laughs> from Dunk. This is what we get. This is what we expect from Dunk. <laughs> yes. But the one thing that I like that Dunk did here that I want to highlight because it doesn't happen enough. He acknowledges, despite the fact that this was a major win for Brave, this is the first major battle in this war. You have to expect that after being smacked around like this. Naraus is not going to take this sitting down. He's not going to take 140, almost 140 billion S loss, where his side lost multiple dreads, despite having significant advantages in numbers. He's not going to take it lightly. He's going to go back, and I expect that we're going to see more attempts to attack Brave. It's going to be, you know, it's probably going to be, I don't know, the best way to describe it is like by, the, you know, just traditional Sov War, uh, playing it by the numbers. Like this is, I, I want to zoom back out here and do some analysis on, on what we saw here. So big picture chessboard stuff. Uh, this is what we would call a, a headshot attempt, right? When you're going after an enemy stager at the start of a war. 
And I've always been pretty skeptical of headshots, right? I'm, I'm, this is a thing I say in public. And if you look at our grand strategy, typically that's the case. Uh, you know, yes, the Imperium will uh, periodically go after hostile, like staging Fort is ours. But in this case, uh, we're talking about an enemy iHub, the Braves iHub in their staging system with a very high ADM and an off TZ. Now, what's happened here, of course, is that Braves, uh, I believe their SOV and their Citadel times have now shifted into EU. Uh, it takes a lot longer to get your Citadel uh, timers over there. It's a 30-day ticker as opposed to about seven days for moving your SOV time. Uh, so n what we see here uh, was a lot of, frankly, hubris, right? It, it's hard to not have the hubris if you are leading a block. God knows I have had the hubris many times before. And it, it it's happens. Bad. It happens. And, and you, know, you know, sometimes you find yourself doing dumb things. And when I was seeing Norris sending pings in the run up to this fight uh, with uh, straw polls saying, hey, should we do this thing to brave and, you know, basically getting the troops all riled up for it, uh, it, it struck me as an oof because uh, one of the things, I, I don't know if you have the statement that uh, Norris pinged in the aftermath of this uh, and, and can bring that up, but Norris in the aftermath had a, a pretty reasonable point, which is, uh, basically, why headshots like this are a really bad idea. If you have a dedicated defender in a node contest in Fazisov, the higher the ADM, the faster it's going to be for the defender to clear their nodes versus for the attacker. And one of the things that Brave did, and Brave did very well, was a relentless spamming of Griffins to ECM hackers, right? And if you're just unable to hold that grid control, uh, eventually you're going to get bogged down. And that's exactly what happened. The way that these Fuzzy Sub contests tend to work in practice is you need to turn up Firstus with the Mostus, and you need to have everything locked down because it is designed in such a way that the defender can make it incredibly miserable for the attacker. Right. We did that in the Vietnam War. And now that we are on offense in this other campaign we're going to be talking about here in a bit, you know, you'll, you'll notice it. If you have a Fozzy Sov op that people didn't dot the I's and cross the T's and take seriously, the defender can do all sorts of things to fuck with a lazy full of themselves attacker. So, you know, this is just sort of um, a, a classic situation where uh, a block gets too much hubris and goes, we're just going to make a vulgar display of power and, and pave you over, right? It would be like after giving my State of the Gunion when we launched our campaign uh, three weeks ago, we ran directly to like the JTAC Z Keepstar in Inn's Mother, right? Which would be an interesting target, but that would be a full-blown headshot on a Keepstar attempt or their staging hub there, and, and it would be bad news for exactly these reasons. The other thing is, is this. When you try a headshot, you are immediately energizing the defenders on a big set piece battle, right? Big it's time. their home. All of their shit is in there. They're going to drop what they are doing. And then what you do is in many cases like this, if you flub a headshot, braver heroes now, right? I, I, I you know, in the aftermath of the <laughs> Vietnam War, I never thought I'd say that, but the, you know, people are now looking at brave again and going, okay, well, there doesn't look like there's council nonsense anymore. It was like a, a council shit show, but it looks like Dunk is in charge and actually like in charge and look what they did. Look what they did. They worked together with their allies and they beat off a block without calling in any bat phones to another block to help them. And that is a real statement of organizational progress. His troops are going to be energized. They're going to be having fun with it. They know, they know that they can beat a block now if they work hard. It doesn't mean they're always going to do it, but they have that taste of blood. It's the whole Iron Man 2 thing. You make a god bleed. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's, just, it's great for Brave. It, it's, it's not so great for fraternity. Uh, it's, I don't think it's going to be a situation where fraternity is going to turn around and uh, be screwed. Right. I think that Norris's statement here, which uh, Brisk has put up here, uh, is pretty solid. Right. He's saying these are the facts. This is what we lost. And I also would contrast uh, what Norris is saying in the aftermath of this battle, which he lost, which is a pretty objective. Like, this is what happened. You know, this is how we lost it. These are the choices we made uh, with that first bit where it's just this wall of text saying why they're they're doing the thing. Um so yep. yeah, just fascinating. I I I, I was I, I was I think a lot of us were fully expecting that fraternity would would crush Brave and Volta and right. the GTC, like just absolutely. Pfft. Right, um, but they didn't. But they didn't. And so now it's this really interesting thing. Norris is Norris is very committed to CNTZ. Uh, where he has really good dominance, right? That's understandable. AOM is mostly off the table. Dracarys is in the Imperium. He had some attacks on Dracarys in the Imperium, and we did not respond very kindly to that. Um, 
But in order to fight against Brave and to fight against other things, you got to develop a time zone. You got to have other time zones besides one time zone you can control. You can control one time zone defensively, and that's real good. But if you want to be able to move people around the chessboard, you know, you, you got to have some power projection there. And so you're seeing some really interesting things happen that we haven't seen since sort of the Vietnam War. So, for example, uh, you know, Norris is calling in mercenaries. One of the advantages that they do have is incredibly <laughs> deep pockets, and they can hire entities left and right to try to shore that up. Uh, but at the same time, whoever is kind of drawn into this conflict on the FRT side is just eating shit in public because they look like they're trying to club baby seals, right? Like the brave is actually not acting like a nest of insane dra council drama, like Dunk is doing the thing and they're fighting the good fight and there's just an explosion of memes about it. You know, uh, FRT might win this thing eventually. It might take a few weeks. We were surprised. Uh, you know, Brisk might remember uh, what it was a couple months ago, Brisk, when uh, when NC Dodd and PL went into Venal to try to beat up on Brotherhood of Spacers. Yes, and then, exactly right. Yeah. And, and that took them like eight weeks to, to to get the job done. And so we're now sort of seeing an interesting test of here is a, a post-Vietnam happy alliance trying to throw their weight around, and they just got kicked hard in the nuts in front of the entire galaxy. So who knows what's going to happen next? Now, I have to say this, for those who would say or argue that because Brave was part of Pappy for most of the war and Fraternity is part was part of Pappy and we've got Pappies all over the place because that's what they do. Pappy's going to Pappy that. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is really just Pappy infighting. But I'll tell you this right now. Thunder Kasune said it in the chat and I agree a thousand percent with him. Brave realizes ships are ammo. That is proof positive that Brave is no longer in Pappy. At all, because their mindset has completely shifted. Mm -hmm. The absolute fear of losing battle reports, fear of losing the ISK war, the absolute fear of losing anything more expensive than the 10 billion S cormorants they were flying. That that stymied Pappy throughout the Vietnam War, and it made it in, almost in, uh, inevitable that we were going to win because we didn't have that attitude. Ships are ammo. You use them to fight back. There is no point in sitting on a horde of ships that are, that are not being flown and dying and losing all your stuff. These guys would rather pick up, move away, take everything with them, than, than fight us and lose a, a couple of ships in, in the meantime. Brave has learned that lesson. So I'm very proud of Brave for pulling that off. Lose, if Norales and the guys can claim all they want that they fed 100 Griffins or whatever, but you know what? 100 Griffins for an iHub and a 5.5 ADM system that's your stager? Uh, yeah, I think it's a, a worth it maybe just a little bit. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things here is the entire galaxy that was not the Imperium. And there was a few like mid-size alliances that were like people like Volta, right. That we didn't really have any diplomatic relations with, but like, you know, we're in this weird post Vietnam situation where it's like, well, triumvirate wasn't part of Pappy and Volta wasn't part of Pappy. And it's not like we're buddies with these guys, but the population of proud independent human beings that chose not to lick the boots of their slumlord masters and create a shambling coalition of 103 alliances blue with 152,000 bootlickers a part of it. Uh, you know, you have to say, what means, how do you show you're not a pappy anymore? How do you do it? Well, one of the best ways to do it is you shoot other pappies and you see all of the other pappies blob up together, making excuses about, oh, initiative has totally been bat phone. Uh, you know, when they all come down on you like this, you know, clearly brave is fighting pappy. They ain't pappy anymore. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm suddenly like, oh, wow, shattered armor is, is, is great. And it's not like we've forgotten all the things that happened during the Vietnam War. But if I wanted to see what sort of direction a former pappy alliance could take to show that they're not pappy, independent of any imp Imperium meddling, like if somebody in chat is saying, we want to send SIGs and squads up there to help. And that would be a reasonable thing to do, but we have our own war against we got Pappy. We've our own war, guys. We're going to talk about that front. in a minute. And the other thing is, is this. They're doing just fine without us, right? Like, one of the reasons why it is shit what FRT and the rest of the Pappies were doing against Brave and GTC is, you know, the fact that they're blobbing up with blocks. Okay, that's fine. They're going to try to do renter stuff. Okay, that's not fine. Whatever. But if we in the Imperium then turned around and said, okay, well, we're going to come here and we're going to we're going to help Brave do this, it kind of takes the whole keep the blocks out of it 
theme away. What I like to see is Brave and GTC being able to stand up to the former Pappy entities without needing Imperium help uh, because they don't want Imperium help. They don't want the Imperium, you know, it would be sort of us stealing their glory in a way, right? Like it's right. their they battle. They us for anything. Yeah, like they, they stood up at David versus Goliath. That's their win. That's their victory. That's their narrative. And, and it seems like it's, it's cementing the, the new direction that Dunk Dingle has put in for the leadership and the sort of the management pathway of Brave. Uh, so, you know, if, if I, I, there's pappies all around the galaxy. We're shooting them ourselves. And I just want people to keep in mind when we're like, hey, let's go help Brave is like, you know, they're, they're doing it on their own, right? They're learning to ride the bike themselves. They're learning like Sov Warfare is an extremely niche part of the game right? It's mechanics are obscure. They are headache inducing. And if you slip them up even remotely, you can be stuck in tight eye for hours and hours, and hours, and your evening can be ruined. That's the danger of a blown Fozzysoft node contest, which is what we just saw here. Uh, and, you know, Brave's learning it. So fucking credit to them. Yep. I'm pleasantly I mean, surprised. I, I've been scrolling through the, through the front page of Reddit. As you can see, this, this happened like like yesterday, and it's wall to wall, every bit of fraternity brave propaganda. I mean, it's literally like fraternity needs to figure this out. Okay. I know maybe you don't get Reddit or you don't get the propaganda game. Maybe there's a cultural issue there or something, but this is something fraternity's never really done a good job of. And they really need to, because if this is going to be a real null sec war, the brave guys are eating your lunch. They're winning the hearts and minds. Everybody out there is rooting for them. And they're stunting on you all over the place on Reddit. And you guys look like schmucks. And, you know, having your random FC saying, oh, they fed when you lost the ISK War 2 doesn't make you guys look good. I will give Narouse credit. I thought that the ping, and, and I'll pull it back up, where he goes and, and explains himself. You know, where he says, today, you know, TLDR, we lost the objective in the S4. The window is now in deep EU. Mm -hmm. And they were blaze hazing through the first 20 minutes. Brave was doing everything they could. And it was a bloody fight. And I, I had to cho choose whether we were going to go away or whether we are going to contest the system. I chose we would contest. So we had all the different fleets. And he talks about everything that happened. And he says, yep, that's what happened. That's it. Okay. That's fair. And I mean, that, that's yeah. that's what yeah. you got. You want to get that from your leaders, because the sign of a good leader is somebody that it's not that they don't they don't ever, you know, spin or that they don't ever go out and do propaganda. Right. Because <laughs> God knows we do enough of that on the show. But the, the, the true sign of a good leader is when you take a big loss, you suck it up, you put on your big boy pants and you admit it. And Narouse did that. BJK yeah. did not. He's all like, we, we knew the end. We just went, yeehaw, and Brave fed us. Okay. Narouse did, and I give him credit for that because mm -hmm. I think that's the kind of thing you want to see. from. It shows a little bit of maturity on the on the side of a alliance leader. You know, Norris, one of the things I, I like about Norris is that he's a really canny guy. Like, he is, uh, he plays the game uh, in all of its different methods. And, you know, people criticize him for having characters that have been banned in the past, and those are legitimate criticisms, right? Who hasn't, right? Right, yeah. Just but, saying. like, what, what are, one of the things here uh, is, you know, he's an operator. He, he's an operator. Like, he he thinks in a way that you really don't see from more, like, you know, when, when NC Dot comes at you, it's like getting charged by a, a wild boar. Now, that wild boar might be a little sickly in the year of our Lord 2022. Uh, but, you know, when Vince is coming at you, he's just going to come at you. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm... I'm a metagamer, I'm a schemer, all these other sort of things. So these, these are a lot of things that I respect about Norris. Uh, and so it's going to be interesting to see how he sort of digs himself uh, out, out of this one because they are getting shellacked in the public eye. And right now it's a real sort of good guy, bad guy dichotomy. Uh, but I, I wouldn't expect FRT to do something uh, like just really dumb but you know who knows maybe maybe they will they actually they just did something really dumb they publicly told everybody they were going to headshot a staging i hub and ping straw poles and then they got kicked in the dick repeatedly in front of the entire galaxy so we'll just have to walk that back a little bit and see how yeah. things progress but it's going to be real interesting because in general uh you know norris is uh not going to be unanchoring keep stars in the middle of an op that you've hyped in the <laughs> middle of a gigantic critical battle. Like, it's not going to be like a, a self-owned situation you would expect to right. see from test.
But, the only uh, downside to the whole this whole war is that Norhouse doesn't get on and do any English uh, uh, alliance statements. So I, the chances of us getting a good Mind One remix of something he says that's funny is relatively low. It makes me sad. <laughs> but we'll go from there. So... All right, so that right now, that is the state of the Northern War. Volta and Brave are holding their own versus Fraternity. Again, Fraternity has the numbers advantage by a significant margin. They've got a ton of money. They have their renters. They have money coming in. The smaller groups have plenty of means to, to harass and attack them. In fact, I mean, that's what caused this war, according to Fraternity in the first place, was Volta's constant harassment of their territory, especially their renters. So I think we're going to see more of that in the future. If, if they come back and try to headshot again, we'll see. I mean, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Whether or not they do that, I, we'll see. But I, I think you can expect that, at least given what happened here, the brave guys are going to be on their side. They're going to be really happy. They're going to be a bully. And you can tell mm -hmm. from Reddit that these guys are having a good time, that they're very pleased with themselves. Don't get too pleased with yourself because you still got to finish this war. And on the other side, on the fraternity side, this has to be a galling loss. And I get the feeling that that's going to supercharge their guys to want to come out and fight. Now, the only the only thing I will say in regards to this whole thing is Brave and and Volta have a significant advantage because they're off time zone. And as the defender, being in your own time zone, being able to get your own fleets and forcing the other guy to alarm clock to be able to fight you. That's a big competitive advantage. And that, I think, is something the fraternity is going to have to figure out how to deal with. Now, what we've seen and this leads into some of the conversation we're going to have about our war, is they're hiring as many mercenaries, and Mitten said this earlier, and I, re I will reiterate it, they're hiring as many mercenaries as they can find that are in U EU time zone so that they can contest Brave and Volta. And that makes good sense for fraternity, but mercenaries aren't always as motivated as your own guys are, and there's only uh, so much amount of alarm clocking that you can really get and, and be willing to do. Plus... If you are successful in any of these Entosis fights and you want to take that that sob for yourself, you can't rely on mercenaries to do that. You need to have fraternity folks that are going to be able to Entosis those IHUFs. So uh, at the end of the day, I mean, they can they can attack them. They can't they, they can can't attack, place they new can't ones do, down. Yeah. And they can't, the lay, they can't put their own down. They can't it, they can't take the sob themselves. So that's one of those things they're going to have to deal with. So. Any last words on this before we move on to our war? It's, it, it's fascinating, and I, I have to say that during the 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 years of the Vietnam War, like you know, Dunk and uh, Dunk and Norris are both very significant figures on the Galactic Chessboard, and you're also seeing people like Starfleet Commander and Volta really sort of stepping up. Uh, so I think this is fascinating because we're seeing sort of instead of the same old, same old, hey, it's it's goons versus Bob and some flavor again. It's just really neat to see some of these guys get some time in the spot. Like during the war, uh, people like Dunk were overshadowed by idiots like Pro God Legend and Vili, who are leading Test and Legacy Coalition to absolute destruction. And you know, it's an opportunity to really see, hey, here's a, a different kind of war, and let's see what Norris does. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see what Dunk does. Okay, that's interesting. What's going on with this whole GTC thing? So this is one of the reasons why renting sucks because when you don't have spaces that are occupied by landlords, RMTers, and bots. New talent grows in a garden. New experiences happen. People who have been playing the game for years, sure, but they haven't had a chance to get their hand on the wheel and really run an alliance at Savoir. And so we're seeing new stuff. And why are we seeing it? Because the fight is happening in an area that has not been paved over and turned into a space slum by the Slum Lords of Pappy, who we're going to be Bingo. talking about shooting in another theater right. of the war. Here we go. Now. Now we're going to go we'll move on. Nullsec Power Hour. It's going to be a relatively quick one. We're going to be an update on the Imperium's War against Fire and the Renters of Pappy right now. So if you want to know how the war is going, here it is. What are we doing? Well, as you can see, oh, we have a ton of iHubs in Faith Abilis, Tenerife, all of these areas that are getting hit very hard by our guys. And we're going to keep doing that for as long as we can. Most of these timers, as you can see, Faith, these are all X-Death, Horde, Horde, 
Horde, horde. There's one because, like we said, like we said on the show weeks ago, what did these people do? The first thing that they did after we swept through these regions and cleared them out, just like we did in Tribute in 2019, and then we left, and other alliances could grow there and do things. Oh no, 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 no! The Pappies, Legion of Death, and Horde are right there, slamming down hubs in order to turn it into a slum for botters and RMTers because they are compulsive slum lords. So we are clearing that shit out. Uh, One of the things I want to say. I, I got to give a shout out to the initiative. Our allies, our lovely, wonderful allies who are like the Space Marines to Goon Swarm's Imperial Guard. Uh, right now, there's a lot of goons in Berlin that are just sideways drunk high. Who knows what they're doing? It is the weekend of Goon Berlin. And uh, I have a little bit of FOMO, honestly, because I really wanted to go to that and I couldn't. Uh, and the last two days, the initiative has been on an absolute rampage, a rampage, Fact. racking up timers like you would not believe. And I, I had to, to reach out to Dark Shines earlier. I was like, look, dude, like uh, guys in general, like our, our EUTZ leadership layer is going to be a little thin this weekend because they're they're all in berlin getting trashed but this is kind of also a a general knock-on effect of something that we saw of an impact of norris deciding to go after brave like this is because he needed mercenaries and so uh, a group that had been attacking the initiative for the last several weeks has now been contracted to work for fraternity against brave thank you Uh, deep water hooligans we love you yeah, and, and you know, Tamoxa runs a solid group. Like they're legit mercenaries. They worked for us for a little bit in Vietnam. Then they, you know, you know, it's not always like you, you know, they're mercenaries. They work for all sides. That's how it works. Uh, but because of Norris's lack of an EUTZ, he needed to hire more marks. He brought them on board, uh, and then suddenly, uh, Init was free to work their magic. And boy, howdy! So I just want to say to everybody who's been on these dark shines like rampage fleets in the last couple of days. We're going to get done with Goon Berlin, and when we stagger back to the computers, we're going to have more people around. There are goons and fleets. We are doing things, but I just really want to give Dark Shines and the guys in it credit for coming out of the corner in Fountain where they were, you know, we were flanked. We were dealing with attacks there. We were also on the offense, and they just came out of the corner swinging like crazy. So a lot of this rampage you're seeing here uh you know uh in it to fucking win it so credit where it's due thank you and i again i gotta give dark shines and the guys a lot of credit i mean they have kept this thing going uh shines told all of us a couple days ago all right guys get your big boy pants on this weekend we're going hard in the paint and get ready and if you can i mean listen look at these timers we have at least three dozen timers or more here you know in it coming out in the next two two or three days that's pretty crazy, and it's all because we are pushing back on these guys in their area. Now, what's FIRE going to say? Well, the same thing they say all the time. Oh, these are floodplains. Okay, fine. At some point, though, you're going to run out of floodplains, and then we're going to get where, where you live. And it's funny because when we were hitting Faith Abolus and Omis the last time, Tenerifus was their fallback point. We'll stop them here. Now that we're hitting Tenerifus, and they're pulling back to Deterid and MNC, it's like, okay, I get, I get, is that what, when, when do we get out of the floodplains? Let us know what area you think is really your home area so we know when we get there that we can expect you guys to fight back. Because I'll tell you, it's been kind of surprising the lack of any kind of, of significant contesting by the fire guys. And even the horde guys have, have, have stopped. We don't see, other than Arcadius, who seems to want to lose monitors to us every other day. From fire, yeah. We haven't seen a whole ton of, of work from him. Uh, and we haven't seen a ton from from uh, from from the horde guys either, so it's weird. I have actually, I have some frontline reporting from this. I I missed out yesterday, but uh, I, I I have to confess that I have been playing a little bit of Eve Online, a game that some of you oh, may really? have heard of. I and, think I saw you in a bar guest. Did yes, that actually happen? It, it did, and the bar guest keeps getting more and more interesting. I invite everyone who might be primarying me on the Matani in a bar guest to please do it. Uh, because mittens tanking is a, is a classic goon thing uh, because puppies love to shoot me for some reason. I don't know why I'm such a likable guy, uh, but anyway, uh, it's been really interesting. So it, it's not such a scenario where there are no fights because if there weren't fights, the war would be uninteresting. So what's been happening is U S time zone. This is a real area of U S time zone action in Eve online. And the U S time zone is a, an area of struggle uh, in most of the other areas of Eve. There's definitely Euro ops. There's a lot of things happening in yep. AUTZ and CN, of course. Uh, but 
I, we talked at the start of the show about the challenges USTZ has been having with activity. And so I want to herf and hype up the fact that on any given night in USTZ, when we are forming up and you're seeing me sending screening pings, uh, we've been having activity from fire, usually in the form of uh, Arcadia Soul, who is a severance FC that you might remember from the Vietnam War. Uh, you see uh, some of the horde guys keep firing off pink pins. And these are one of the things during the Vietnam War is we didn't really get a chance to shit on the, those guys so much because all the oxygen was stolen by the Villies and the Pro God Legends and the Elf Boys. Uh, but you got to see these guys are now forming up and constantly intervening because like we keep saying, Pappy's gonna Pappy. So just as NC Dot rushed to FRT's rescue against Brave when they didn't need it uh, to support the Pappy landlord system, you're seeing Horde regularly forming up with fire in several locations, as well as shocking PL and NC Dot. So it's the same band of chuckle fucks, but this is what makes US time zone interesting is that in many cases they're forming up in different locations and they're coming at us. And we've had whelps. Like we whelp oh, yeah. a certain I mean, fleet. what we do in like you know when we don't whelp, it's weird, right? When we don't whelp, it's a situation where I get worried because it's not a real combat. Because goons will be goons, and if we are not crashing fleets into trees periodically, that means that we're not teaching our fleet commanders how not to fleet crash, uh, how not to crash fleets into trees. Because as I say repeatedly, you always learn more from a failure than you do from a victory. So loss is a part of learning. So on any given US time zone, it's not a clear glassing. One of the reasons this is a slow progress, a slow and steady progress is on any given night, USTZ, uh, there's usually about four different entities forming fleets and coming and trying to either catch our guys unaware uh, or just mulch us. And it's been good. Uh, you're seeing some play and counterplay. We're getting to use the tech fleets. The bad guys tend to use EOS which were designed to mulch our uh to mulch our eagles and then you get to you know it, it, it and also we're not using munins so <laughs> it's great you can come and fight and have a war and at least if you're in the imperium we're not forming munins out of ge8 so there's a whole bunch of different more interesting things our enemies are no. still of course using munins no. in some capacity but uh them's the break <laughs> and I have to say, you know we're talking about all this stuff there's stuff happening right now this minute in EVE Online. I want to laugh. So far today, Init has killed three iHubs. We have reft a total of eight that we're going to kill uh, at some point today. Jesus. And in response, Constantin, our dear friend, Constantin the Severe, the sincere, Dumb, yeah. <laughs> decided that he was going to bitch to PanFam about why they aren't helping as much. So in response, our dear friend Headliner, who is a Mets fan, by the way, formed a massive, massive PL fleet of 25 Kikimoras and went down to Iridia to hit things because that apparently is somewhere, anywhere near the front line. But wow. they're currently, uh, they're currently camped into a station and they can't go anywhere. Yeah, so, I, oops. I, I, I just want to, again, I started with the shout outs here on the segment, and I just want to reinforce is, you know, goons, a lot of us are in Berlin or talking to people who are in Berlin or otherwise, you know, in Freedom Land, there's still some like, you know, leftover holiday action happening. Uh, and Anit has just come out swinging. So if you are yep. a, a drunken goon and you come back to the Keys in the next couple of days mm -hmm. and you see a huge pile of timers, Thank your allies because my God, they are doing the work uh, while we get drunk and go. socialize in Berlin. So I guess, but have hey. fun staring at the inside of an Iridia station while We're you get camped in by our <laughs> Alpha Alt Ghost Fleet in Iridia. Good job, we, PL. We, you know, the, the other thing is, is that I got a little bit, a uh, little bit more uh, screaming to do about this, and and then we'll wrap things up here soon, but. At the start of our deployment, I gave a state of the Gunion. Every single alliance leader in this game who is at the level where they have to care about what the you know, Goonstorm speech is going to be knows that a state of the Gunion is a declaration of full-scale war because – you know, that's if you're going to get thousands of people together, you should do something military useful, militarily useful with them rather than, say, playing Rickroll, which is something that Vaklau did to all of his people in the old school Northern Coalition. And I thought that was very disrespectful of people's time. So when I call a speech 
everybody knows it's either we've got a Titan fight the next day, like an M2, uh, or, or, or actually a few hours, like an M2, uh, or uh, it's going to be a war. And the excuse that I have seen used again and again and again from the Pappy slumlords as they flee before us in a cloud of excuses and, oh, the other guy was going to do that or, or whatever, uh, is that it's not fair that we brought our super caps. We have essentially posted <clears throat> a, a, an engraved notice to the entire galaxy and y'all have had weeks weeks to bring your fucking super fleet and have it out with us we brought our super fleet and so if you're just gonna cry like a little bitch when you have how many blocks together that you could all form pappy again oh wait you're still pappy but you could coordinate and do something i just want you to know when you complain about the size of the imperium capital fleet that it is your own leader's weakness and fear that prevents you from bringing your own and having a fight and bringing you the counter. It's not like we didn't tell everyone we were coming by screaming at the top of our lungs in a fucking speech that we were going to do this. And now the, oh, well, you know, they, they gave a thing and they brought all their stuff. Well, you know what, honey? You've had weeks to get your shit together. So that whole excuse doesn't really sound the same as it does when you first did it. Holy crap. What the hell just Star happened? Lust, Star Lust, 50 Dude. tier one subs. My Normally God. we don't talk about subs during the show, but for wow. 50, we got to say thank you. Holy That's shit, legit. dude. That well, is make legit. sure that you thank this guy for giving you, if you got a sub from this dude, make sure you give him thanks because we do appreciate that. We do appreciate That's what that. we're talking about. Mm. All right. Good so to wrap this up, we're, we're going to wrap up the Nullsec like Power Hour and finish this up here. I, again, we're, yeah. we've got a ton of work to do. We're going to keep fighting these guys as long as we can. And hey, you know, maybe once in a while they'll put on their big boy pants and bring their supers up and maybe we can have a good fight. We'll see. I keep hoping. We've we've hauled out Titans and thrown them on grid a couple times in the last uh, couple days, and we're still waiting. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping. But I'm hoping that, uh, you know, as Mr. V is typing was the thing that scared off all of the uh all of the nc dot guys in the last war i'm hoping that in it might deploy will become our new uh catchphrase <laughs> to scare the shit out of these fire and pappy guys as we're going on now last thing we're going to do on the show today because i do want to get to it we skipped out last week boss if you're okay we'll go a little bit over tonight yeah sure i'm, I'm good we wanted to give ccp some attaboy so i want to do that uh yeah. and talk a little bit about the eve evolve that they put out the other day which is Good, has has a lot of good stuff in it not all not as much good stuff as we would like but at least want to talk about it because it did happen and i know folks in the chat have been waiting for it so we're going to go to piercing the corporate veil we're going to talk about the latest game updates from ccp uh that happened in the last two weeks so the biggest thing that happened in this section uh, which they are calling eve evolved building the future of eve is they finally added DirectX 12 support for the game now their claim is that this is going to provide greater immersive detail and it's going to make it easier for them to update things in the future you're going to get a much better uh a visual experience it adds ray tracing all kinds of different stuff i know that in the community that there have been mixed reviews for the direct x12 rollout because some people are having trouble with it i've not had any problems i think it frankly it looks really well uh, on my screen i know it looks pretty good on, on everybody else's screens as well so i think at least from that perspective, the visual updates that they added, and you can see they talk a lot about them, uh, were pretty significant. And EVE is a beautiful game. It has been a beautiful game. It's one of the reasons why we like playing the game, because despite the fact that this game is almost 20 years old, it doesn't look like it's almost 20 years old. It, it stands up to pretty much any modern game that you can look at. And the art team and the graphics team are one of the areas in CCP that no one tends to complain about. That That's the good side. True. Now, the bad side is, uh, does this get anybody in space? No, it doesn't. This is a nice to have. It's not a need to have. But these guys are doing this work anyway. So, you know, it, it just makes it part of the deal. Now, one of the other things that they did that I think was pretty well received as well was they overhauled the career agents and they created this uh, new um, system within the NPE that provides meaningful rewards as you are going through different career paths that they have laid out. Uh, they've called them a number of different things. They've got the enforcer, they've got the 
uh, uh, they've got the industrialist and a couple other different ones that are out there. And you get points for each time you do something in the game. And that turns into ISK and skill points and other things that people like, including free ships and stuff like that. I like the way that that's been implemented. I think a lot of veteran players kind of, and I, I'm actually surprised by the number of veteran players that took to that system. And I think it, it makes it clear that we as EVE players like to fill up the bar and get as much of the stuff as we can and, and uh, achieve these goals that are being tracked for us so we can say we did them. And I think that's a good thing that they focused on that. There are some tweaks that need to be made. Some of the things like joining a corporation, if you're already in one and you don't want to leave, you shouldn't have to leave to clear that box. You should get yeah. credit for that, stuff like that. But I think in the end, the, them adding that was pretty good. Again, we have got a lot of, uh, they talk a lot of stuff about the enhanced sensory experience. They, they made a bunch of changes to the Photon UI. I know that the UI is something that I'm very concerned about as a CSM member because it is the most fundamental part of the game. How the UI looks is a big deal, and making changes to the UI is a potential that could uh, really cost us players if people don't like it and they can't change it back. And as you guys know, I am the king of there better be a toggle so I can use the old one uh, until it's 100% ready to go. And so far, they have done that. I've been opting into the Photon UI for a while. They finally added compact mode, which was a big ask there's still work that needs to be done it is still a rough beta it's not a hundred percent ready to go there are plenty of bugs as you see them bug report them and get them out there but it doesn't look bad and in fact i i kind of like it better than the old uh ui so far but they haven't made a lot of uh, like a ton of changes so that's something to keep in mind they made audio performance improvements that's great eve has sound i didn't know that that's the joke. Uh, whether or not that actually matters, I don't know. But I mean, at the end of the day, the biggest issue with audio performance is if turning off the audio provides such a performance increase for so many players, you might need to work on that. Just saying. And then they talked about future infrastructure improvements. So in terms of the patch notes, they added a bunch of stuff. You can see this air career program with the different goals we talked about, the different rewards, the skins that they're providing, the boosters, the audio changes, a bunch of graphical changes. They made some balancing. I think this was something that was a big deal that I think they still need to tweak. Uh, they changed the way the crab beacons work. And this was, I think, primarily designed so that you could not park a super or a carrier inside a POS or near a POS and then run the crab sites from, you know, send the fighters safety, out 10,000. Yeah. yeah, from safety. And But the result has been that because these guys hit the fighters so hard now that it's almost impossible to use a carrier or super to run these crab sites at all. I don't think that's what they intended, so Oops. we've been working with the CSM <laughs> to try to fix that because it's not great. And then they also changed the amount of uh, isogen that you need in the crab beacons to try to reduce the price because it needs to get down. These were supposed to be less than 40 million esque, and they're not right now, and that cuts into the amount of money that you can make with them, and that means pe fewer people are running them. And then, of course... This, this was a huge one, and I hate to say this because this is really stupid, but this is this is the kind of thing that I think uh, is one of my biggest criticisms sometimes of, of, of CCP. The Women's Sisters of Eve advanced combat suit is now correctly in the women's section of the market. This is a bug that has been in the game for like seven years since the suit came out. And every every couple months, somebody will say, oh, by the way, you know, the women's SOE suit is in the male section on in, in the market. And all it, it just takes one little change. Somebody paying attention and seeing this and just making this one little change. It took them years to finally fix this. Thank you for fixing it, but damn, did it need to take that long? And again, as as the, they've they've again, we went through the rest of this stuff. They've they added a bunch of little changes. Uh, and then we saw the start of um Mimitar Liberation Day, and then they're also doing a summer of streams where they're going to be putting a bunch of streams out. This week coming, they're doing a team security discussion. So if you want to bitch about bots, you want to complain about botters, you want to complain about all the stuff in the game, the team security deals with bands and the RMT and the like, let's pay attention to that one because that's the one you're going to want to watch. They've got EVE events, they've got a security Q&A on Discord, and then they got player data dev blog and, and CCP stuff coming up in the next month. Then in August, we've got Faction Warfare discussion. 
That'll be important to pay attention for the future of heraldry. Another thing that was announced at FanFest, we can see where that's going to be and when they're going to get that out. And so some other discussions, including a retrospective on the Siege Green update, which has been, I think, one of the better updates, although it has been slightly controversial. So we saw this coming out from CCP this week. Mittens, what did you think about these changes? I, I think that one of the challenges that uh, longtime players of the game have is like oftentimes when I like get in a bar guest, right? They just start, hey, it's time to play some even client and we're going to do the thing is if you've been playing for a really long time, everything has been changed so many in so many different ways it can be very difficult to remember which iteration it is on right so the learning curve process can be slightly more difficult as more time passes you're like wait a second you know sino is here oh wait no they're only on recons now and then this that the other thing right so one of the things that i find exciting about this is that it's a real opportunity to be like okay i want just the eve 2022 experience and I, I was worried. I, you know, I, I genuinely, when I, we analyzed their finances and there was these $8 million that were spent on R and D and salaries and stuff. And CCB kept promising, Oh, it's the new player experience, new player experience, blah, 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 blah. And then when they announced some of the Eve evolve stuff at FanFest and afterwards, it was kind of like, eh, because there had been no real trust there because there had been, you know, right. water and wyverns and all this stuff. And so I was really pleasantly surprised because honestly, kind of like kind of like I sort of expected FRT to to roll brave uh, for a while now. I've I've I'm used to being disappointed right when it comes to CCD <laughs> things and, and you know it, it, it's gotten good reviews lots of people including myself who have no official reason to be able to, to to need to go play the AAR system are going like hey actually let's go mess around with this and, and I think it's going to be a really useful introduction for both the, the new UI and a refresher on all the, the, the modern things uh, so I mean it's great they need to do more they need to continue doing Absolutely. more. They need to address the issues of the players. Uh, but I, I'm going to go ahead and say that, you know, spaceships looking better is, I, I think that there is an incentive to undock. Is it as good as gameplay necessarily? No, but I think that if the ships are looking better and the, the nebulas are of a higher resolution and things are more beautiful and engaging, that, that sort of touches a visceral note. So I, I'm absolutely going to give CCB a gold star on this one. There are more, more gold stars out there for them for fixing yep. things that they fucked up. But we got this a whole bowl full of them on, if, they'll give, if and, you'll do it. Absolutely. This was an honest to God gold star and good on them for it. <laughs> So I want to say thank you to CCP for doing at least some stuff that players like. And there were no nerfs in this patch. At least as far as I could tell, it was good stuff. Everything that all of the changes made were good changes. Uh, I didn't see anything in there that was crazy bad. I know, obviously, there are always bugs. There were a bunch of problems that, that came out uh, for the first couple of days. <laughs> you couldn't see the tether in space anymore. That was a big deal. They fixed that. Uh, and a bunch of other things that are obviously needing to be worked on. And I think... DirectX 12 is going to be a boon down the road. I think a lot of players are going to have to get used to it. But the good thing is it's a toggle. You can turn it off if you don't want to use it. If it's eating too many resources, go back to DirectX 11. There's no issue there. Then, of course, you have, and I guess I understand that there's a separation between DirectX 12 and the graphical update. You get the graphical update regardless of DirectX 12. But the graphical update, I think, was useful. I like it. Game looks very nice. That, to me, is a selling point. It'll get new people in the game. It's not going to help veterans undock or anything, but it does get people new people in the game. They don't want to look at a game that looks old. So looking at a game that looks new, that's a good thing. And the visuals in space, people sit around, and they're going to look at those and be like, damn, that looks really good. People are going to like that. So we like that. That's why we are here talking about this stuff. So we have wrapped up. We are pretty much done. With the show today, I have two shout outs I want to do. First of all, one to Maya Cowboy. Welcome to the chat. Why aren't you in it? You should join in it soon. Mr. Unlucky, thank you for joining us as well. We got a bunch of our, our streamer pals watching today. Uh, Mr. Unlucky is a new member of Goon Swarm. He was actually streaming live the FRT fight last night. So it was kind of cool. And oh, he gave me the yeah, update. That's so thank you for helping me. Because I tuned in to see that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if wonderful. you guys get a minute, check out. Mr. Unlucky Stream, check out to my Cowboy Streams. We, they are friends of the show. We'd like to, to give them a, a little bit of a shout out there. Uh, the DX, D DirectX 12 is enabled by default. If you want to turn it off, click on the little sprocket next to beta on the side of the, uh, the launcher, and it'll let you turn it off. You can click the box and turn it off. So last up, Monday, July 11th, is my wife's birthday. Well, I want to say happy birthday to Mrs. Brisk because her birthday is on the, on Monday. Mine is on Tuesday, but nobody cares about me. We care about Mrs. Brisk. So happy birthday, <laughs> honey. 
We're going to have fun tomorrow night. I'm taking her to the end of Little Washington for dinner. And we're going to have a good time. And uh, thanks for sticking around with me for all these years. Boss, any last words before we get out of here? You guys got 25% extra Meta Show today because unlike CCP, we're not going to raise the rates and give you anything more. We give you more every week. Any last words? I think that is it. I think that is it. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate you guys letting us have a break last weekend for uh, all sorts of excitement. And it's good to be back at Herf and Blurfs about spaceships. We will see you next week for more Meta Show action and war, war, war in the game getting good patches that improve things. Things are you got it. looking up a little. It's it's nice. I like, like it. To see. I like to see. All it a right. Lot. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Meta Show for July the 9th, 2022. I am Brisker Ball, joined alongside the Matani. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll catch you next week, and you stay classy, New Eden.